Hello, welcome to the Tuesday, March 27th, 2018 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Xavier did a little bit more hunting in virus total for binaries that include PSXEC. Now, while doing this, he came across a sort of interesting IRC bot. This IRC bot was a Windows executable, but they actually made one important change. Typically, as part of the header of the file, you will see the string, this program cannot be run in DOS mode, sort of a leftover from the time when people didn't necessarily have Windows and tried to run these binaries on the command line. Well, in this particular case, this string was actually replaced with GIF89A, Adobe Photoshop Elements, kind of making it more look like an image, even though, of course, the file still started with the typical MZ signature. The trick here tries to evade filters that don't just look for MZ in the header, but instead also expect this, this program cannot be run in DOS mode string as part of the PE header. Other than that, this looked like the standard IRC bot with the typical capabilities that you expect in a bot like this. It also disabled uh, anti-malware pretty much only by replacing common host names that anti-malware connects to with loopback addresses in the host file. Not actually sure how effective all of this is because for example, for Sophos, they're just entering their www.sophos.com and sophos.com, which in itself may not necessarily block the updates for this particular anti-malware engine. And with iOS 11, Apple has integrated QR codes into its camera app. So if you're pointing your camera at a QR code, you're automatically being offered to open a particular URL within Safari. Of course, features like this have always been dangerous because a user typically can't read the QR code. Well, iOS gives you a hint here. There is a pop-up first that shows you the URL and then asks you, hey, do you want to connect to this particular website? However, it looks like iOS doesn't always get the domain name right. If you are crafting a URL with ad symbols, then you can actually spoof a different domain. So while the app will show you that you're going to domain A, you are actually being sent to a different domain. This could first of all be used to direct users to malicious websites, but more Importantly, this could be used for phishing. So think about a scenario where you are at a conference, there are QR codes posted, for example, to log in to Wi-Fi or to register for the conference. You use one of those QR codes and then you're being directed to a website that looks just like the valid conference website. In this case, it would be very difficult for a user to figure out that they actually just fell for a phishing site. This particular vulnerability was reported to Apple late in December and as of yet has not been fixed yet. And one hot topic in recent years has been security orchestration. So what this really is about is that you do have a lot of different tools that you're using as you're responding to certain incidents. And of course, a lot of this is repetitive. If you do have a ransomware outbreak, if you do need to shut down a machine or lock an account, there are very sort of uh, scripted responses, which of course you know, asks for a script. Now, a lot of the times what you do is you end up writing scripts sort of from scratch. This is quite cumbersome, doesn't really scale very well. So there is now a set of products that essentially does a lot of this for you and wraps GUIs around the idea of automating all these different tasks. Now today I came a pretty neat looking open source solution that does provide security orchestration. It's just called Orchestrator and does work with Windows, Linux, Mac. Also doesn't really require an agent running on the target system. Instead, all it will do is it will use SSH or PowerShell remoting for Windows in order to connect to the remote systems. 
So if you're looking for a system like this, if you find yourself uh, repeating the same task over and over as you are responding to security incidents, this may be a tool for you to look into. Well, and that's it for today. Thanks again for listening. And remember, we still have that Raspberry Pi contest, but I don't see a lot of comments uh, to this uh, podcast. So in order to participate, you do have to leave a comment on the podcast page uh, basically below the show notes. I moved this a little bit around a couple of weeks ago to make it a little bit more obvious. If you have problems, if the feature just doesn't work, uh, please let me know. That's it. Thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.